I'm Jay Myers. I designed Claremont Rules Football, a non-contact alternative to tackle football. I designed Claremont Rules because tackle football is in jeopardy. People are concerned about brain injuries resulting from the collisions that are fundamental to the sport. This concern runs wide and deep, and it's growing so rapidly that tackle football may be nearing collapse as a mainstream sport. If it were to collapse, what would replace it? Not rugby, that's also a collision sport. Soccer, lacrosse, too unlike tackle football for today's tackle players and fans. But what about flag football? There are many popular versions of that game. Some don't even allow contact blocking, and only incidental contact may occur when defensive players close in on the ball carrier to grab the flag. All versions incorporate major features of the tackle game, but would any of them work out as a high school, intercollegiate, and professional sport? In my opinion, no. They're too watered down, not challenging enough, not exciting enough for today's tackle players and fans. They don't have enough to make up for the loss of the hard blocking, hard running, and hard tackling of the tackle game. So we need to get going now on a new game, a non-contact game to minimize the risk of injurious collisions, a game that incorporates major features of tackle football, and a game at least as challenging to play and as exciting to watch as the tackle game. I designed Claremont Rules Football to be that game. Claremont Rules is a non-contact sport. It's not a new version of flag football, so it doesn't even have any of the contact incidental to grabbing a flag. Claremont Rules incorporates major features of tackle football. It's played on the same field and with the same ball. It has forward passes, punts, downs, touchdowns, conversions, and field goals. Claremont Rules makes up for the loss of the hard play of tackle football by importing features from flag football and from forms of football played in other countries and by incorporating fundamental innovations. Claremont Rules has four major imports. As in certain forms of flag football, there are only nine players on a side, and all offensive players are eligible pass receivers. An offensive player may not block a defensive player by contact, but he may set a screen, as in basketball. He might set a screen to prevent the defensive player from blocking a pass or a kick, to open a path for a ball carrier, or to free up a receiver downfield. As in Australian rules football, a player may kick the ball to a teammate for gain. The teammate may take possession of the ball by catching it on the fly, catching it on the bounce, picking it up, or falling on it. However he takes possession of the ball, he's said to capture it. Claremont Rules also has four major innovations, the six-step rule, the three-transfer rule, the chain rule, and the breakaway rule. The six-step rule addresses two basic questions. The first question, how does the defense prevent a ball carrier from running for gain if it's not allowed to tackle him or stop him by pulling a flag? The answer, the defense doesn't prevent that. The six-step rule prevents it. This rule takes away almost all of the running game. With one exception to be described later, a ball carrier may not run for gain. In Claremont rules, this means that a player may not carry the ball across the line of scrimmage. The second question, what prevents a ball carrier from holding the ball behind the line of scrimmage indefinitely until someone downfield gets open for a pass or a kick? The answer, the six-step rule prohibits a ball carrier from standing still or walking. Instead, he may take up to six running steps behind the line of scrimmage. By the end of his run, he must make one of four moves, all of which also occur in tackle football. The ball carrier may hand the ball off, throw it, kick it across the line of scrimmage, or hold it for a place kick. 
The first ball carrier is always the center, or another player who assumes the position of the center shown here. That player must form up where the center is shown, right behind the ball. The other offensive players may form up anywhere behind the line of scrimmage. All of the defensive players may form up anywhere behind their side of the line. The remaining diagrams use these abbreviations of the names of the positions. The center initiates play by picking up the ball. In this case, after picking it up, he takes five running steps away from the line of scrimmage and hands the ball off to the right flanker. The handoff is a type of move known as a transfer. As in this diagram, the remaining diagrams show transfers in red letters. Other actions of ball carriers are in blue. Here, the center takes six running steps away from the line of scrimmage and tosses the ball to the left back. In Claremont rules, a toss is a throw to a teammate behind the line of scrimmage and is a transfer. A pass is a throw across the line of scrimmage and is not a transfer. This diagram sets the stage for a diagram of a kick. It shows more of the downfield because the ball is about to go there. The center runs away from the line of scrimmage, turns, and kicks the ball so that the right end can capture it. A kick is not a transfer. As in this diagram, the remaining diagrams show runs by long arrows rather than series of short arrows representing individual steps. This diagram sets the stage for a diagram of a place kick. The two offensive ends, the two flankers, and the left wing have formed up to impede a defensive rush. Even so, the center would not be able to run away from the line of scrimmage and get the ball down in time to avoid having the kick blocked. So instead, he picks up the ball and immediately tosses it to the right back. The right back gets the ball down and the left back kicks it between the uprights. The combination of the hold and the place kick is one transfer. To review the six step rule, a ball carrier may take up to six running steps. By the end of his run, he must make one of four moves, hand off, throw, kick, or hold for a place kick. He may transfer the ball in one of three ways, hand off, toss, or hold for a place kick. Now, another question arises. What prevents the offense from transferring the ball indefinitely, essentially playing an indefinitely long game of keep away behind the line of scrimmage? The second innovation, the three transfer rule, addresses this question. According to this rule, the offense may make up to three transfers. This diagram shows the second of two transfers involved in a place kick. The first one was the toss from the center to the right back. Here's another case of two transfers. The offense is in the formation used for the place kick. As before, the center tosses to the right back. But this time, instead of holding the ball for a place kick, the right back makes a short run to his right and tosses to the right end. Meanwhile, the left back steps forward as if to place kick the ball and the right wing runs a slant route. The right end then runs to his right and passes to the right wing for a touchdown. In Claremont rules, for a pass to be complete, it must cross at least two stripes. As in tackle football, the receiver must catch it on the fly. And as in tackle football, an incomplete pass ends the down. Here's a case of three transfers. This time, the right back runs to his left and hands the ball off to the left back. The right back continues to his left to draw off some of the defense. The left back runs to his right and tosses to the right end, who has dropped back as before. And as before, the right wing runs a slant. 
but this time he cuts back toward the middle to catch a pass from the right end. The third innovation, the chain rule, is the most radical departure from tackle football. This rule provides for nonstop action. In Claremont rules, the line of scrimmage is always a five yard stripe. According to the chain rule, when a team completes a pass or a kick but does not score a touchdown, a new line of scrimmage is established as in tackle football but the location of the line is not what it would be in tackle football. Instead, with one exception that does not apply here, the new line is the next five yard stripe. For example, if a completion occurs on the defensive 42 yard line, the new line of scrimmage is the defensive 40 yard stripe. If a completion occurs on the offensive 42 yard line, the new line of scrimmage is the offensive 45 yard stripe. Similarly, if an interception occurs on the defensive 42 yard line, the new line of scrimmage is the defensive 45 yard stripe. If an interception occurs on the offensive 42 yard line, the new line of scrimmage is the offensive 40 yard stripe. Here's a modification of the diagram showing three transfers. In this case, the right wing catches the pass not in the end zone, but on the defensive 42 yard line. The line of scrimmage becomes the defensive 40 yard stripe. This modification shows the locations of all the offensive players after the catch. This one also shows the defense after the catch. According to the chain rule, after a completion that does not result in a touchdown, the down continues uninterrupted. Players do not have to retreat behind their respective sides of the new line of scrimmage. The six step rule and the three transfer rule take effect immediately. The player who caught the pass or captured the kick now the ball carrier may take up to six running steps behind the line of scrimmage and so forth. If the offense then completes another pass or kick, but does not score a touchdown, the chain rule applies again. This action may continue indefinitely. For convenience, the remaining explanations refer to the white team, now the offense, as the sparks. The yellow team is the bolts. The bolts are covering the sparks almost man for man. The exception is that the bolts left back drop back to make it less risky for the bolts left flanker to try for an interception. The left flanker had to be careful because in Claremont rules, if opposing players are about to collide in pursuit of a pass or a kick, the defensive player must give way. Now, Let's look at one transfer in chain play. For simplicity, this diagram shows all but one of the players moving in straight lines, and it shows only one screening move. The Sparks center screens the bolt's right wing, freeing the Sparks left flanker to slant right for a toss. In an actual game, the moves would be much more complex. Now let's go back to the pass from the Sparks right end. Here, the Sparks right wing does not catch the pass, but instead the Bolts left flanker intercepts it. The Bolts are now on offense. Before the interception, the stripe that is now the line of scrimmage had been designated the defensive 45-yard stripe. At the moment of interception, it became the offensive 45-yard stripe. Again, let's look at one transfer in chain play. The ball carrier runs to his left. The Sparks' right wing covers him to prevent him from passing or kicking downfield. So he tosses to the left back. Here's the situation after the toss. This diagram sets the stage for a diagram of the fourth innovation, the breakaway rule. 
This rule takes precedence over the rule prohibiting a ball carrier from crossing the line of scrimmage. If no defensive player is in the end zone, the ball carrier may run across the line of scrimmage and break for the goal line. No defensive player may obstruct him. If he crosses the goal line before the entire defense, he scores a breakaway touchdown, which is worth nine points. If any defensive player crosses the goal line first, the offense is penalized. This modification of the last diagram splits the field to show more of the defensive territory. The Bolts' left wing, who happens to be the fastest player on the field, streaks downfield and catches a pass from the left back. The wing is drawn even with the Sparks' left back. The wing knows he's faster than the back, and he's already going at top speed. The wing crosses the line of scrimmage in a breakaway run. He beats the entire defense to the end zone, scoring a breakaway touchdown. This concludes the introduction to Claremont Rules Football, a non-contact alternative designed to be at least as challenging to play as the tackle game. All players must acquire a large skill set. Because of substitution rules not mentioned here, they must be able to play both offense and defense. On offense, they must pass, kick for distance, kick for accuracy, set screens, run routes, catch passes, and capture kicks. On defense, they must block and intercept passes and kicks and work their way around screens to mention just three skills. They must develop tremendous stamina to handle nonstop play, and they must learn complex team tactics not seen in the tackle game. I'm working now to put Claremont Rules football on the field. If you'd like to participate, please contact me at the email address shown here. But before you do that, please check the Blogspot blog whose link is shown here to make sure that you have the current version of this introduction.